No, Tell me. Thank you. Well, I didn't see any Jamaicans on the podium. <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of that that time when you when you saw that? What kind of race was that for you? I knew that was coming. I've just been waiting for it for a few months now. Um, finally got my start down to where I wanted it to. I knew after the semis that it was going to be. The, Today was going to be the day. I looked at the weather. I was like, yeah, this is, this is it. How, how did it feel to, to break Michael Johnson's record? And you saw him afterwards, I believe, as well. Yeah, he, he came down after I got down with all my like, uh, video interviews. Because uh, to be honest, I didn't expect him to calm down. I remember watching Wade break the 400 meter record. And I'm like, dang. Michael Johnson only got one more record left. I'm like, who's going to be the one to break it? I'm just like, I want to be the one to break it. And shoot, I, like this year, all me and my coach have been talking about was like, we're going after that record. We're going after that record. You know, and here it is. And now we're hungry for more. What were you saying to the clock when you saw 1932? I was telling it to give me some slack, you know, man? <laughs> I was like, how's it going to show up in the same time, 1932? Come on, change that. And then how did you find out that it was 1931? Who told you how it was? How well, I turned react? around from the big clock, and then everybody went, yeah! And I'm like, what happened? And then I looked up at the, the big clock in the stands, and I saw 31. I'm like, yes! <laughs> Why'd you have such a great start tonight? I don't know. <laughs> Enthusiasm. <laughs> All right. Uh, great field behind me, full of great starters. I didn't want to lose. I had a plan to win. Yeah. What the was the role of your family in this win? What was the role it was, of your family? Of course, support. You know, we support each other in everything that we do. And that, doesn't mean that it's going to change just because somebody is graduating from high school or college or somebody is trying to win a world championship. And you tweeted before that USA were touching everything here. Oh, everything. Uh, <laughs> and you did another one, two, three. What do you make of the current generation of sprinters you have in this country? Man, it's, it's nice to see, man. I, I remember looking. I, th this whole year was just wild because I, I remember starting it and I'm like, I was having back issues before indoor and I was like you know I'm not gonna run indoor and then here I am in Milrose running against the fastest 60 runners ever and I'm like why the heck am I even here then I'm PRing in the 60 and I'm like oh shoot and then we're going outside and you know we're going to Bermuda and stuff like that and I'm like oh this is okay but then I'm driving and I hear Arion just runs 19.4 stop my dinner plans turn back around we got to get ready to run tomorrow drop the 19.8 you know, I'm watching Fred, Mike go at it in my Mount Sac. We're going at it in Doha now, pre, all the way to New York. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is what I've been waiting to see from America. You know, there is nothing but dominance. You can't choose a favorite until I came back around. <laughs> one more quick question for you. How special is it for you to do this in front of American fans? It's just exceeds the energy that you already had planned. You, oh, it's definitely here. Now, I'll tell you what Hayward Magic is. Hayward Magic is when we all walked out and you could feel the environment shift. Everybody already standing on their feet. Everybody excited, screaming out every name. Not just excited to watch US people compete, but everybody compete. Knowing that they were about to see something amazing and then it happened. How many fa family members did you have in the stadium tonight? What did you say? How many family members did you have in the stadium tonight? So I got mom, stepdad, sister, brother, dad, stepmom, uncle, grandma. All right. Everyone talks about how special rivalries can do to the sport of athletics. Yeah. At the moment, it looks like there's one developing between you and my team. What do you think that's, how, how do you think that's going to shape the way the 200 meters go? Because there's still a couple of records that you guys could break. Yeah, I, I think it's going to get any, even better. Uh, and then now that I'm, you know, doing this in the 200, <laughs> I remember, I, exactly, it's time to move back to the 100. You know, now the, the 100 can be fun again. Uh, apparently, I got to start waiting to come out. So now I just got to keep getting it and making sure that it comes out in the 100. When and why did Last you make the decision to drop the 100 this year? 
because I really wanted to break that American record in the 200. And I did not want to lose the Arion. Like, point and simple, I don't like losing. And it was just too much of a risk to try and double at this championship. Um, with Arion over here dropping 19 fours. <laughs> and that decision was in like May? Or when we did made you make it, that decision? I made it right after pre. Right. I was, and I had been thinking about it for a little bit after Doha, but it was really after pre, Ralph Mann came by and he was like, yeah, the way you're starting is bad. And I'm like, shoot, because I've been practicing all this all year. So I'm like, now we're basically starting from scratch. I'm not about to go into a hundred with a start from scratch. We uh, start, now I'm gonna just find a race that I love and then keep improving it from there. Just a celebration. 